Well, hey there, I'm Emma from Mmm English. Welcome to my channel. Notice that I said welcome to my channel, not welcome for my channel. You're probably here for learning English, right? To learn English, right? Man, those little words to and for, they're so tiny. But when they're used as prepositions in English sentences, grammar can get quite confusing, can't it? <laughs> I'm sure that you've been confused by these words at some point. So in this lesson, I'll go over them in a little detail so that you can feel more confident using them while you write, while you speak in English. Prepositions in general are pretty easy to confuse. For some of you, part of the problem is that with these prepositions, you're thinking about the way that you use them in your own language, not how they're used in English, and it can be different. For example, Spanish and Portuguese speakers often use the preposition en, where in English we use both on and in two separate words with very different uses in English. So part of the challenge when you're learning is understanding how to use them separately in English and what the difference is, when to use one or the other. Some languages don't really rely on prepositions much at all. I mean, sometimes English prepositions don't have a lot of logic to them. They don't always make sense. And for all of these reasons, English prepositions must be learned and practiced in context with other words. So we won't focus too much on each individual preposition in this lesson. We'll look at words that they're often used with. Oh, and just before we get started, you might be interested in some of the other lessons that I've made about prepositions. My playlist's up there. I've made lessons about in, on, at, by, lots of other prepositions. But back to these two prepositions we're talking about today. Sometimes using the wrong preposition doesn't affect the meaning of your sentence too much. Native speakers will recognize the mistake, but they probably won't correct you on it because they'll still understand you. But with these two prepositions, they can often be used in place of each other. And sometimes the meaning completely changes. So here's what I'm going to do in this lesson. I'm going to talk about the uses of to, I'm going to talk about the uses of for, and then I'm going to talk about the times when you could use either to or for. And that's where things get a little confusing. Make sure you stick around until the end of the lesson because later on I'm going to teach you some common word collocations using to and for, so you can stop guessing which one you need to use and just know which is the right one. <laughs> and before we get started, make sure you subscribe to the channel just by clicking that red button down there so that you can keep up to date with what's happening. Okay, let's start. When should you use the preposition to? So you can use to when there is some kind of movement from one place to another. Now, keep in mind, this doesn't only relate to physical movement and action. It can also relate to other types of movement. We can use to when there's some kind of transfer happening or something is being moved from one place to another, a destination. Something is being moved to somewhere or something, right? Do you usually take the bus to work? So there's movement, of course, in the direction to work. The destination is work. Now I'm going to give you a few other examples and I want you to pay attention to the destination or the direction being described in each one. If you're feeling sick, you should talk to a doctor. Can you quickly run to the shops? They invited us to their house for dinner. Now, if you're talking about distance, you should also use to, since distance is the length or the time from one place to another, to a destination. 
It's only six kilometers from my house to the office. Now, we also use to when we're talking about time and the amount of time between two points in time. Of course, we use it when telling the time, right? It's a quarter to seven. It's five minutes to eight. When we're talking about one point in time to another point in time, we can also use two. The supermarket is open from 9 to 7 p.m. I study English Monday to Thursday every week. From this time to that time. So this is a period from this time to that time. That's the direction. That's the movement. Now, if there are two things and you'd like one of those things a little more than the other, you prefer it, right? You prefer one thing to the other. I prefer chocolate ice cream to vanilla ice cream. I like chocolate ice cream more than vanilla. It's way better, obviously. <laughs> and I would rather have chocolate ice cream. He prefers riding his bike to walking. Do you prefer tea to coffee? Not me. I love coffee. <laughs> Okay, what about you now? I want you to tell me about some of your preferences in the comments below. So make sure you're comparing two things and that you're using the preposition to. I prefer summer to winter, for example. Add it to the comments. Now, we can also use to to talk about the point where something finishes or ends. It's the limit that you can't go past. During the flood, the water came to my knees. So in this situation, talking about limits, you may also hear the phrasal verb up to. The water came up to my knees. The tickets could cost up to $200 each during the high season. Okay, I want to check you've been paying attention. Okay, time for a quick quiz. What are the four different situations where we commonly see the preposition to being used. The four situations that I just talked about. Write them in the comments. Quickly, you've got 10 seconds. Direction or destination. Time, the time between two points. Preference and the limit or the end point of something, right? Nice. Let's check out what for is used for now. So we can talk about benefits using for, the positive effects or results of something. So we can use for, for example, one of the benefits of eating ginger is that it helps your immune system. So, ginger is great for your immune system. Exercising every day is good for your health, right? That's a benefit. We also use for to talk about time. We use it when we're doing something over a period of time. So when something has happened for a number of hours, days, weeks, months, years, you get the idea, right? We do something for a duration, a period of time. They've been living in the city for three years already. How long have you been studying medicine for? I've been waiting for 20 minutes already. Where are you? Wait a second. Notice how all of those examples are using the perfect tense. For is often used when talking about time in this way. You can actually check the lesson that I made about the present perfect tense and using for and since right here. I'll link to it at the end of this lesson as well so you can keep watching this one now. If you do something to help someone out or do something nice, then you are doing something for them. I baked a cake for my sister. I need to collect the mail for my grandma. Hey, can you grab those boxes for me? 
You'll see from these examples that this is an important one to know so that you can ask someone for a favor. Can you please do something for me? This is a helpful phrase, right? A helpful one to know. It's a really common expression. Can you help me? Can you do something for me? What's this thing's purpose? What's its function? What's it used for? Well, it's used for drinking and filling up with water. Remember that we use for when we're talking about a function or a use. We use the form for plus verb ing. What is it used for? It's used for drinking. It's used for taking. It's used for driving. Yeast is an ingredient used for baking bread. That camera is used for taking pictures underwater. So notice how the verb ing form is always following for. Okay, things are about to get a little trickier during this lesson. But before we do, I want to check that you've been paying attention again. We're going to recap on the different uses of for. Can you remember them all? Write them down in the comments quickly. You've got 10 seconds. We talked about the benefits, the duration or a period of time. We talked about helping someone and we talked about the function and the use of something, right? So all of those situations were ones where you can use two or four. It's not a complete list. There are some other uses as well, but they are definitely the most common ones. Now, another very common use for these prepositions is one where both of them can be used, both two and four can be used, which is where things get a little trickier. You can use both two and four to talk about a reason or a motive. So that is to talk about why someone is doing something. For what reason are they doing it? But in this case, they are not interchangeable. You can't use either one in the same way. But luckily, luckily, there are some simple rules to remember that will help you to use them correctly. Use two when the motive or the reason is a verb and use four when the motive or a reason is a noun. Make sure you write that down. That's a super tip. Let's check it out. Why is he studying English? He's studying English to apply for a job. Apply is a verb, so we use to. He's studying English for work. Now work here is a noun, so we use for. So you've seen lots of common situations where we can use to and for. But now let's look at a few examples where you can use to or for. Both of them can be used correctly, but the meaning of each sentence changes. So this is where you have to be a little careful, okay? My assistant brought lunch to me. Okay, now remember, to is used to talk about destination or direction where there's movement involved. So in this example, lunch is coming to me. I'm the destination for lunch. My assistant physically carried the lunch and delivered it to me. Hmm? Now, my boss brought lunch for me. So remember, for is used to do something nice for someone, right? Or to help someone with something. My boss brought it to me because he wanted to do something nice for me. Both of those sentences are grammatically correct, but using for or to changes the meaning, right? So you've got to be careful. I made a quick phone call to my mum. So to helps us to understand the direction of the action, the destination of my phone call. I called and my mum received my phone call. Now, I made a quick phone call for my mum. I'm doing her a favour now, aren't I? I'm helping her. 
I'm making a call to someone else because maybe my mum couldn't call them or maybe she didn't want to for some reason. So I called that person for her, to help her, right? Now there's a bunch of different situations where you can use to and for, but really trying to memorize all of those situations is a pretty difficult way to learn them. There are just too many and it becomes really difficult and confusing to try and remember them all. Now, back at the start of this lesson, I said that learning to use prepositions in context is really important. It's the best way to learn to use prepositions correctly in English. Learning common collocations is gonna be really useful for you. Like I said, it's best to learn prepositions with the verb or the noun that they're commonly used with. Have you heard of collocations before? It means when words are often together in a sentence, they appear often in that way. And so you often hear them together, they sound right, they sound natural. And if they're used incorrectly, they kind of sound weird or wrong. So memorizing or becoming familiar with collocations is a really good strategy to help you remember which preposition is the right one to use. So do you want some examples? Let's talk about some now. So with this verb, apologize, both prepositions can be used, but with different results. We can apologize for something, the action, or we can apologize to someone. So that's the person receiving the apology. He's calling to apologize for missing the meeting yesterday. He should apologize to his boss for missing the meeting yesterday. Okay, so you're sorry for missing the meeting, but you need to apologize to your boss. Your boss is the person that you need to apologize to. So try to remember these collocations next time you do something wrong, right? When you've messed up and you've made a mistake. Try testing them out. You apologize to someone or you apologize for something. Now we also travel to somewhere, right? We travel to Cuba for the holidays. Um, have you ever traveled to Europe? Okay, we use travel to. But we also use travel for when we're talking about a purpose or even a time. I'm traveling for three weeks or I'm traveling for work, for the purpose of work, right? You apply for something, right? I'm applying for a scholarship. I'm applying for a new job. But we can also apply to a person, okay? We ask for something, right? I'm asking for a new backpack for my birthday. Ask for help if you don't understand, if you need it. Ask for help. We use belong to when we're talking about ownership or being part of something, right? Do you know whose dog that belongs to? The car that I smashed belongs to my dad's company. Notice that we don't use belong for, right? We also care for something or someone. I've taken time off work to care for my mum after her operation. We prepare for something, right? I need to prepare for my exam tomorrow. Can you please help me prepare for dinner tonight? There's a lot of people coming around. Now we use wait for something or someone, right? Wait for with a noun. I've been waiting for the bus forever. It's taking ages. <laughs> Can you please wait for me? Right, we're waiting for something. But we can also wait to do something, okay? We can wait to buy, you know, so wait to is followed by a verb. If you can learn and remember some of those collocations that we just talked about, they're really common, they occur all the time, well then you'll be so much closer to using the prepositions to and for like a total pro. Actually, why don't you give it a go right now? Right now, practice makes perfect, right? So in the comments, pick a few of those common collocations, the ones that we just talked about. Maybe challenge yourself 
a little by picking the ones that you haven't heard very much or you don't use very much yourself, but write a few sentences in the comments below. I'll be checking to see if you've got them right and give you some feedback if you need it, okay? Thanks for joining me today. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and send me a little message down below and say hi. If you want to keep practicing though, of course you want to keep practicing, right? Check out this lesson here, or this one is the present perfect lesson that I mentioned earlier, where I talk a bit more about using for, okay? For and since. I'll see you in the next lesson.